Hello, everybody. Uh, we're starting a new series of conversations in our platform, Dilse, and this is the first of the series of conversations that we're going to have. And we're going to talk about the state of the economy, of the Indian economy today, and what better person than to talk about it uh, than Dr. Subramaniam Swami, who is an evangelist in every sense of the word in this, uh, in this, uh, in this, on this subject matter. So um, this is going to be a freewheeling discussion. There are not going to be any questions and answers. It's going to be a conversation. Yeah. And I hope uh, that you will enjoy as we move along in the course of this conversation. But let me, let me ask you, Dr. Swami, and I want to start off on a broader issue, which is that the entire global economy is adopting artificial intelligence yes. as it moves forward. Yes, yes. And in a country like India, where we have 1.4 billion people, how are we going to cope with this challenge of artificial intelligence and how much impact will it have on our economy? Well, artificial intelligence uh, impact is, uh, it, it depends, it's, it's like a knife, uh, it, uh, uh, it's a question of how you use it, because it's uh, essentially can replicate practically everything and, uh, and then find you solutions. And so, and the, you know, uh, the uh, NASA had uh, done a research long two years ago and said, that over the years, the artificial intelligence will be able to make you speak to a robot, robot or robo, and that robo will uh, will understand you if you speak in Sanskrit. Right. So, in a sense, uh, because Sanskrit, uh, you know, the, the, there's no two uh, P U T put and B U T, but uh, that problem is not there in Sanskrit. Correct. Correct. It's all uh, very precise. So I would say that Indians, if they are properly educated now, uh, they will probably be in the, in the forefront, because the, well, largely because of the population. The, you know, the, the extent to which it can be used and so on. So I, I think uh, artificial intelligence is something we should welcome. And the government should actually start the research project for it and encourage people, give scholarships. No, but I'm looking at it from another standpoint. Uh -huh. Look at it from the impact of artificial intelligence on commerce. Uh -huh. yes. Right? That's another aspect of it. Yes, of course. The, the reason why the Western world is adopting it yes. is because they don't have enough manpower. Yes. Right? Yes. And so if you go to a grocery shop today, yes, 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 yes. you don't any really need any manpower. Yes. You have your mobile phone, that's you can pick right. up anything that's and right. you go out. That's right. Now that's fine for the Western world. Yes. Now we have manpower and unless each child is educated oh, yes. in, in, in artificial yes, intelligence, yes, yes. people are going to be unemployed in millions. Yep. It is that aspect that I'm worried about. Well, that is an aspect that you should worry about, but I think for us, it's more the problem solving. Uh, to present a, a question and the uh, artificial intelligence, through the artificial intelligence uh, robots, you will be able to get solutions. That's fine, but provided you are able to empower our children. See, ah. what is this, <laughs> the point is, ah. this is now confronting us yes. as a big na global challenge. Yes. What are we doing about it in India? That's well, the question. I, I, at the moment, nothing much. But there was a period when uh, the whole uh, computer issues, the software, everything. After all, software came because of the Y2 issue. Yes. And then... That's 2000, uh, the year 2000. Yeah, yeah 2000, the, you know, the zero, zero will take you back Correct. to 1900. Correct. So at that stage, it was the Indian research which got you the solutions. That's true. And uh, I think uh, what will happen is that the, even the West will have to depend on Indian, uh, Indian scientists. And so there are already many... For their benefit, scientists. though. Of course. But we, uh, we can uh, as a consequence. But they there. haven't even thought about it. That, that depends on the leadership you have. You if you have dumb leadership, then, you know, the, oh they will just give you, give you a spin. You're saying that the leadership is dumb. Today's leadership is uh, only is, uh, not, uh, there's no scholars, uh, scholarship in today's leadership. Wow. 
You it's, have highly educated people who are leading Well, they must have a spine to tell the Prime Minister who is not highly educated. Uh -huh. I don't even know what he's educated in. No, we move away from, we we'll go to <laughs> commerce and move away from the field of education. Okay, so, now there's been a lot of talk, we move on to something else, uh, on this five trillion dollar economy, right? It's, uh, it's uh, listen, this was, uh, at that time itself, I had gone public on it. We were 2.7, uh, 2.5 billion uh, trillion dollar economy. Correct. Uh, uh, five years ago. That's correct. And uh, he said, I'll make it five trillion. trillion. Correct. By 2024, 25. Yeah, in five years time. But we have not even crossed uh, four. No, we, we are, no, just crossed three incidents. Yeah, 3.6 3. or something, something in current prices. That's correct. That's not the same thing as constant yes. prices. Yes. IMF says that you will reach five trillion by 2027. Something like that. Right. Assuming there are no crises in, in between. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, but the, uh, by then it will not be enough to be 5.7 trillion. You need this country needs at least uh, by the 20, uh, 2030 period, it needs to be in the 10 uh, trillion. Well, no doubt about it, but oh. there's another aspect to it which only you can throw some light yes. on. So if you look at countries like Italy, Brazil, France, the UK, they were in the band range of two to three billion dollar economies 10 years ago, right? Yes. And we were a little below that. Yes. 10 years down the road, we're just above three trillion. Yes. Right? So but yeah. their per capita income uh -huh. yes, population was much, much higher. higher. Yeah, because the population is much smaller. Much smaller. Uh -huh. Now, Compared to Italy, Brazil, France, and UK, our per capita income is just over $2,000. Yes, agreed. Right. Agreed. So un there's no point in having a $5 trillion economy if your per capita income is going to be one. No, about two. I, I wouldn't quite say uh, so categorically. I would add a, a caveat to what you're saying. Okay. And that is to say that some of the investments we need our percentages of the GDP, irrespective of whether, it's, uh, uh, whether the population is large or small. Correct. And so when you have uh, $5 trillion, uh, a percentage of it uh, is uh, enough for India's uh, you know, uh, innovations and other things for investment purposes. Well, it's not happened. No, that's because the focus is not there. It's all, all most of it is in terms of uh, of uh, saying this can be done, this can be done. Even $5 trillion, they, originally it was supposed to be in 2023. Uh, 20, uh, 23. But uh, uh, today uh, we are nowhere near it. It's uh, less than uh, uh, four definitely uh, in current prices and in constant prices. It may be just three as you pointed out, three trillion. Yeah. And uh, we have a long way to go. Yeah, but you look at it, Brazil, who is at the bottom of that ladder yeah, there, the country yeah. that I'm talking about, yeah. has a per capita income of $12,000. No, but what does that signify? It signifies it that there is enough money in the economy for the investment. No, no, money is aggregate. Yes. I'm talking about aggregate. Ag aggregate means not per capita. You are talking about per capita. Correct, correct. Uh -huh. But if you have a $5 trillion economy, that's aggregate. No? Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. right. But uh, as a but per capita. But it must translate into per capita, no? Uh, that is only when you want the population to become that's, less poor. But, but that's. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's I, what I, I'm talking about. I, of course, that is, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, fubooing that. Yeah, yeah. I am saying that for India to accelerate, to raise the rate of investment, which means the rate of, the rate of savings. Right. The question is that you have a large population, they save a small amount, that's enough to get your engine moving. Yeah, but this is a rate of savings, as you know, and huh? you, you, yeah, you I, know the statistics much yeah, better than I, has come down. Uh, uh, well, you were telling me not to get into that aspect just now, a minute ago, otherwise I'll... No, no, I'll, please, please, please. No, no, I, I, I would say that Nobody in the present government knows any economics. Oh, I see. And, uh, and it comes from bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. Even the ministers don't know. Mm -hmm. They only sign. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the difficulty. But the PMO is, is, is actually... PM has... I've known the PM since 1972. I'm talking about PMO. PMO has uh, a man who went to England and did some development economics 
that doesn't give you you need some mathematical uh, training in order to be able to do the calculation to create a model mm -hmm. the they had uh, economic advisors but most of them have left i see they have gone to the imf the world bank and so on mm -hmm. because they were not being listened to mm -hmm. you can only listen to if you are in a position to understand what the person is saying correct uh, if you say 2a b or something like that which you then uh, it means that uh, you know uh, you really don't that. know what is going on All right that's true see we had this g20 and the uh -huh. g20 countries and uh -huh. i was looking at some of the statistics yes we are at the bottom of the ladder in, the in per capita terms. in per capita yeah and but now, but we are not, even indonesia is higher than us yes in but in we are number 3 in the world in aggregate but that's all right but what no, see if it doesn't translate you see that's prosperity. where we are having a problem yeah i am saying that yes what you're saying is very important for poverty and other issues yes but i am saying for investment i agree but that investment is not happening what's happening in terms of investment i agree that i agree uh, this that, is the problem that part i agree that that's an additional part yeah. that yes investment is not it's like it's like unless saying, you incentivize it's like saying i have 5 crores of rupees in my bank yes right and yes. i have six members of the family yes right the per capita income is high uh -huh. if you divide it but, from the numbers yes. but there is no growth happening because i am not using the 5 trillion 5 crores in the right way in, yes correct this is the yeah, problem absolutely correct that's the point absolutely correct that's yes. the point that that's I'm the making. point i am also saying the same thing yeah. you must know what to invest in right uh, and that you see suppose today uh, you look at uh, america mm -hmm. and see the Uh, uh, the interest rates on loans that people take from banks just 2% that's correct and we are doing it at, at 14% 13% no, no, we, we cannot possibly compete to the rest no what was the difficulty in lowering the interest rate well they worried about the fact that lower the interest rate give more money to people more npas more problems no there will be less npas you make the people uh, tell people that this interest rate you invest then only we will give you they don't uh, we'll give risk. you the huh? they won't take that risk uh, well <laughs> you know the, a, a lot of these people will like, run away to you know other parts of the world after taking the money you, you know i don't know you might have been a very young man at that time 1991 mm -hmm. vp singh left our government with mr chandrasekhar i know in a complete mess and what did we do uh of course we got a, a, a thanks to the americans we got a big chunk from the imf that's how we but, were saved uh, yeah but we invested it yes yes we did uh, and then mr rao came the transformation and he transformed everything no doubt about it so i'm saying today also if like mr rao you bring, bring about change mm -hmm. and provide incentives for people to invest not to tell them to do it here or do it there no, but you know we are moving i mean i think this government is moving away from investment mm -hmm. and more into into giving the you know freebies to people yes that's they they think that this way they they'll votes. get votes yes so they are not worried about the economy. no they are not worried about the long term absolutely so they're more worried about politics that's right So that's, that's very serious because it is serious because there's no one there to tell them that this is not the way to do it. So the real transformation of the Indian economy took place during the 90s. When, uh, when Rao ji was Narsimha in power. Narsimha Rao and Narsimha and Manmohan Singh followed it up. Also he has got no credit for it. Yeah, I don't yeah, think. They, they but, but but I I believe that we are told that the history of India has actually commenced from 2014 and there's nothing that <laughs> I, happened yeah, prior to that. The history of India of the economy going down. I'll tell you this. Okay. Uh at some stage when you get time. Okay. Write down the growth rate. Uh growth rate because we are focusing not on per capita No, no, we're not, we're not. Growth rate GDP from 2016 and plot it. Yes. growth rate uh from one year to another mm -hmm. and plot it mm -hmm. or you read my book um, i've read it uh, okay in that you, there's a graph yes and we are coming year by year down, down. that's correct in uh, 2020 uh before the corona and the first quarter the growth rate was only on an annual basis 3 1/2% which was the jawaharlal nehru period uh, growth rate hindu rate of growth in the hindu rate of growth <laughs> truly belonging to the hindu rate of growth 
Now, after that, there was a boom down That's true. because of Corona. Yes. And then to climb back and then go, they are not pointing out that the present 6% and all that they claim. We have still not... Yes, reached uh, that 3.5%. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. You're right, you're right. So, uh, the because problem you are, is... you are starting from a very low... Yes. Uh, yeah. The problem is, uh, 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 my friend, the newspapers are not reporting. The only paper that has published uh, this kind of thing is the Hindu, which published my article. Right, right, right. How many people read English, you see? Newspapers are not publishing it. And they every day come out 6%, 7%, 8%. Yeah. As, is it current prices? Is it constant prices? Even that they don't tell you. And they, they tom tom about it. See, yes. the fastest economy in the world. Yes. That kind <laughs> of right. thing. I've seen the finance yeah. minister. Yeah, so. they say the IMF is supporting it. IMS now is, IMF has now changed. Mm. They've started telling us you are heading for a crisis. Yes. Uh, but and there's only now. That's on the public debt issue. Yeah, the other, uh, uh, quite right. Mm. Because public debt is all that they are doing. Yes. They are they are collecting money by uh, uh, falling on public debt. They say now that huh. they are borrowing, uh, but in the midterm, yes. in the midterm, our uh, public debt will be higher than the GDP. It is no. already higher in my opinion. No, they say about 80% today, okay. but it will be more than 100% in the medium term. They may term. have excluded some things also. Oh. But anyway, you see, I am also of the view mm. That the Indian economy is so well structured relatively to other countries, particularly African, Asian countries, even China, that we can turn it around. Of course we can, if you have people like you there. Or you. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're a Harvard guy too, you're like me. <laughs> so, and you know the law, so you know which, what things you can do and but you can't do. They know how to break the law. <laughs> <laughs> and then say that we haven't broken it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me move on to another very interesting area, uh -huh. I think, of the economy. Uh -huh. Is that you have a country in which the service sector contributes 70% to the GDP. Today, that may not be as All right, 69, as 68%, yeah, something like that. Uh, anyway. And the manufacturing sector uh, yes, contributes 20, around 15, 16, 15, 17, 15, 15, 15 yeah, 16%. Right. Right. And the balance is agriculture. Yes. But most of our population is in the rural areas. So uh, really, a small percentage of people in this country are generating economic growth. Yes. Right? Yes. What does it tell you about the future of India? Well, well this is a very small number of people did the revolution on... Uh, on uh, on uh, all the electronics that uh, came in the uh, 90s, you see. But that's uh, nothing. That's not happening. That's what I'm. That's asking. not happening because there's no motivation. I'm honestly telling you, people are so much migration has taken place. Nobody is pointing out. So many people have started going out of the country. Nobody's reporting. I I know them because 1. I see 5 them from there. million their, people. They are, yes. and they are all educated. Yes, that's true. You know, the, the, the Americans don't have to pay for their education. They, we we give them already made, and the Indians adapt very fast. So there, all that is happening today, and I am saying this because as a patriot, I think I should bring it out because others seem to be in my party a little scared that something might happen to them. Okay, so uh, therefore, uh, and I'm, you know, being a wild man, I've been through the emergency, I've been through so many things without, I got sacked from the IIT where you played a role to give me to get my money back. <laughs> so, uh, I would say that the real problem today is the fact that people are afraid to express the truth. And the newspapers are being told what they can publish in economics and what they can't. Mm. But unless the manufacturing sector grows and we get earnings That's through export. That's very easy. All you have to do is lower taxes. But it's growing at 1.6%. Naturally, today. what is the incentive? You tell me, unless you tell people that 95% of your profits you will keep and as long as you reinvest it. Uh, we won't tax it. Mm -hmm. You will see tomorrow people, you know, putting up factories and so, so on. So what you need actually is liberalization, internal liberalization. Narasimha Rao proved it. Right, of the Indian economy. It's not happening. It's not happening. 
nobody uh, even wants to take Nasimha Rao's name. He should get Bar- uh, at least Bharat Ratna. Uh, he should get in this uh, January. See what I was worried about, and I was looking at some data mm. that all the investment is coming in, which is backed by global companies. Yeah. Right. That's right. So all the FDI is coming yes. in, also backed by global companies. Yeah. Yes. And all the profits, though the investment is coming in, yes. the profits are being generated for the global companies. Yes, absolutely, right? absolutely. And the result is that the, the the capital accumulation which should take place in India, yes, right, in yes. the economy, that's yeah. not happening. Absolutely, this is it is there in the numbers. We were once upon a time. 36% of the GDP yes. we were saving right. and investing. Today it's less, Today than it's less than 27. Correct. That's correct. Uh, I mean, it's never happened before. Right. And that's why the public debt. That's right. Yeah. That's, and you make it up by just printing money. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So look, this is very worrisome. China did it through manufacturing. Yeah. We can't do it through manufacturing. No, we, you see, the question is we, we don't need to because we have a service sector which is in big demand anywhere That's because correct. the wage rates are so no low. doubt about it. Uh, so uh, I don't think we need to copy China. No, no, we don't need to. Uh-huh. But I uh, see the point that I'm making is you're right. The yeah. service sector can do it, but we need a liberal uh, economic sure. structure oh, sure. to sure. allow that to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, people, people, uh, people should be rewarded for what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah, and that's that's Absolutely. really not happening. Yes. Now. Uh, this comes. This takes me to the point of poverty. Mm. Yes. The huge disparities of income. Right. Eight hundred million people living at five thousand rupees a month. Yes. Right. So yes. actually, the Indian economy is dependent on the two hundred fifty million people. Well, I would say the way to remove poverty is not by evening out the inequalities. It is by generating employment. How do you do that? It's very easy. All you have to do is to tell them that, uh, uh, take for example, where there's, uh, uh, where there is no factory, you set up a factory. Mm. There's so many things that you can build. There are countries which are ready to come here and get like they did with China and Japan earlier. They can do it with India. But all are Taxes, this G, whatever, what was that tax thing that uh, that they introduced, uh, which I was alone opposing in Parliament. Which was, which was that? Uh, you remember, it is you were there at that time in Parliament. I, I remember uh, that is the uh, what is it? they had a fancy name. Uh, um, it uh, slips my mind. Uh, uh, um, so it was introduced by Mr. Modi. Mm-hmm. Um, where not only the income tax, direct taxes will be collected by the center, oh, yeah. but even the indirect taxes will, will be, be collected, collected the and then it, the share would be allotted to the uh, states. To the estates. But that's right. Yeah, that uh, that is the distribution of 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 of, of uh, income. Yes. Right. No distribution of taxes. Of also. taxes also. Uh, of taxes uh, also. Coming to that, uh, the. States are being starved of funds at the moment. Yes, that's right. the best way right. because you have this uh, this thing that is called, which I think actually it was originally proposed by Mr. Chidambaram when he, when the UPA was there, but the implementation was done by us, mm-hmm. and Mr. Jetley was uh, in the forefront on that, mm-hmm. and uh, um, it was totally unsuited for because us. Because the states are now saying you're not allowing us to borrow. Or collect. Or collect. Yes. Right. You collect and you collect over and above. You collect the cesses. That's right. Right. And That's you collect right. other things. That's so right. So our share to the total amount That's right. has come down to 28% That's right. That's instead right. of the 41% that the finance That's commission right. directed. Yeah. Well, you got it. You got it. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So this is what they are crying and say, how do we develop? See, unless states develop, the country cannot Absolutely. develop. Absolutely. So there has to be complete decentralization. Yes. And in fact, the states uh, are not even able to employ people for uh, those collections because this uh, center has its own cadre, well, which they, they want to politically control. Now, this is the double yeah, engine yeah, sarkar yeah. concept. <laughs> I want a double engine sarkar means no, which means union will be there in the states as well as in the Delhi. Yes, that's right. That's right. It's something so very. Would, I mean, then then why have a federal structure at all? 
You see, the, 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 the advantage is that there is a social change that is taking place, which is making economic uh, performance or lack of it um, not so important. That's the problem. And that is the mandir and uh, the temples, and this kind of thing. Well, it has nothing to do with economics. Nothing to do with economics, but people are... So you must do both. Ultimately, ultimately, people will realize yes. that uh, even though the Ram Mandir is built, and yeah. that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, we need food on our table. Absolutely. But we, what we need is both. Yes, of course. Because we did have a thousand years of uh, invasions and... We'll talk oppression. about that subject on another occasion. <laughs> we may have a difference of opinion. Yeah, of course, we're about to. <laughs> we should have, otherwise it will be not interesting. Now, let me come to the last issue of the MSME sector. Yes. I personally think. It's very sad. Yes. They are... They don't get any uh, benefits on, on money. Uh, the, the the way they have to collect uh, this uh, the uh, is the same way as even the uh, rich uh, uh, companies have to do it and just go to the market and get money for it. They have no support on marketing, which is the most important thing for MSME. Marketing should be in a, a there should be an agency created that anything MSME produces with sub subject to good quality will be provided in markets by a agency which is set up by the government. I agree with you because at the moment they are starved of capital. Yes. A, they don't get capital because right. you go to there's, court. There's, there's a there's huge a, skill and technology gap. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes, absolutely. Right. So this is a big problem. Yes. And there is insufficient infrastructure. Yeah. And you've got labor which is so cheap. Yes. Which would create miracles for your country. Absolutely. And there's a The Japanese approved it earlier I, on. I agree. And there's a complex tax structure for that. That's right. Which also needs to be That's changed. right. <laughs> <laughs> the headache, yes. So, 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 if the MSME is not, and it's actually they're dying. Yes. The MSME is. Yes, being I know their proportion of contribution has gone down. If, and they are, they contribute thirty percent to the GDP. Yes. Right. Yes. So, as of now. As of now, if they die. Yes. Right. Oh, there'll be tremendous it's unemployment. It's tremendous, tremendous unemployment. unemployment. And I'm worried about that. Yeah, you should be. Before we end this discussion, Doctor Swami, let me yeah. ask you. Yeah. What would you do? Um, if you had anything to do with the reins of power in 2024 for the Indian economy? I will start by abolishing income tax. There will be celebration all over the country. You will lose a very small proportion of the total uh, state income. Very small, 6% or something. And that money, they will put it into investment. Because now there is no income tax. So they don't have to explain, you know, where did you put the money, how did you put the money you will find that people will invest in ordinary uh, housing and not uh, luxury housing. Because that, they, in the luxury housing, they put their, all their black money, which they have yeah. avoided. So I would begin with the income tax. Then I would lower the interest rate on the loans that you give okay. for, to 6%. It's presently, it's 12%, 13%. And which is, you know, in America, it's only 2%. And I'm not saying do to 2%, but 6%. You will find ordinary people, people building, uh, you know, uh, uh, repairing uh, uh, cycles, that kind of people will go and take money and open a sh shop so that, you know, it's available. So there will be employment generation also in that. There are many, many ways. I've written this in a book and I am ready anytime. What about, what about uh, people employing labor and getting a tax deduction on it? Absolutely, you not directly that way. Mm. If the company provides the children of the worker uh, education, mm. the fees for that will be paid for the okay. company by the company and get a tax exemption. So that that increases uh, possibilities of employment. That's right, employment, and you get a new new the youngsters who come there, uh, they they will be uh, much better educated than their parents. Well, thank you, Dr. Swami. It's, a, it's been a great conversation. And there, I would add one thing more. Mm -hmm. You and I should be in the government. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds impossible, but be that as it may. Uh, Uparwala. 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 Okay. All the best. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.